All right. Hello, everyone. So there is a World War II era uh, sewing challenge where we use um, rationing guides of the time. So um, I'm going to try to overlay those rules over the screen right now. Um, if I can, probably can't. I just need to do it. Hi, <laughs> princess. But I used my money that I was given for my birthday to buy um, three different cotton fabrics to make into dresses. This is one of them. I already washed it and dried it in the dryer, so it should be pre-shrunk. Um, I really wanted to find this in a gr uh, brown so that I could replicate the, um, the example that they use on the pattern. I was really hoping to find that, but they didn't have like a check or anything like this in brown. They had some that were like, they looked like a wood printed on fabric and I did like those but it didn't seem like it would be as nice I don't know as authentic or like close so I went with this green which I really did like and it's also a good color for spring and St. Patrick's Day yes so um one of the rationing rules is we can't use any metal in the construction of this I was hoping to do covered buttons but they only had kits for metal bases so that went out and so I was left with plastic buttons. We can't use zippers because we can't use metal. So I have these green buttons that I used for my World War II era bra. Um, so I'm going to use the same buttons. Um, I got pinking shears because that is a finishing technique in, used a lot in the 1940s and 50s. So I am going to just pink all of my edges and... That's going to be the finishing. You don't want to use any extra thread or materials as much as possible because there was rationing going on in that time and you either didn't have access to it or uh, materials needed to go to the, towards the war effort. So I think this is everything I'm going to use to make the dress. I don't think there's anything else. I do have some interfacing that I might use where the buttons go, um, just because I do have it, and if I do have the supplies, I should utilize it. Plus, it would make a nicer finished dress, so that's the only thing I might do, but that's just because I have it, so I should probably use it. All right, so I am going to open up this pattern. I got this from eBay, um, and it I like how it shows that you can use this pattern as a the work uniform, which I think is more like this side. This side looks a little bit more like a day dress. So this is the side that I kind of like. I don't know if I'll do long sleeves or the short sleeves. That I still have to decide. Just real quick, I'm gonna show you what the back looks like. There's the drawings. Here's what the pattern pieces look like. These are the sewing notions, the sizing and yardage. This is what was inside the envelope, so someone tied the pattern pieces together. Hopefully they're all here, but they were bundled nicely, like this tie is very flat. Oh, and it's actually like a, a red gingham and kind of matches. So they use like a fabric scrap to tie it. Here is the inside of the instructions. All right, so I just quickly did a look over and I did not see a year on this, although I do know that this is a 1940s dress. Um, I am going to just show you the inside of the instructions. Okay, so I looked it up in the Vintage Pattern Wiki, and this is from 1943. I actually really don't want to risk tearing the tissue paper by sliding the ribbon off, so I am going to carefully cut it. I know, I'm sorry, but 
uh, trying to keep the pattern pieces from ripping when they're very old and delicate, I think is more important than rescuing the scrap piece of fabric. <laughs> I carefully unfolded the pattern pieces and separated out the ones that go to the bodice where I will be starting. So, so far I've separated out the skirt pieces, the belt, um, and the sleeves. So I set those aside because I'm not going to work on those yet. I'm going to work on the bodice first, so I just want to focus on those pieces. These pieces correspond to making a welt pocket which I'm not going to do. I'm not going to do a welt pocket. So, um, yeah, so this version shows the welt pockets up here. This version shows no welt pockets. We are not going to do the welt pockets. I started cutting out the pattern pieces using pinking shears. Yes, I use cans of white cat food as pattern weights, sometimes. I used a running stitch for the gathered areas. And I started sewing the bodice pieces together. These are the shoulder gathers. And I sewed the shoulders together. So yesterday I did um, do most of the blouse. Um, right now, per the directions, I now need to do the skirt, which I have those pieces cut and set aside. Um, so it wants me to attach the skirt and then it wants me to do the collar, but that does make sense because there's a facing that goes all the way down the front of the dress for where the buttons go. So. I guess I have to move on to the skirt section and I'm still deciding if I want long sleeves or short sleeves. Um, what else? This did fit me really good when I put it around myself so I think we are good to go. Alright and I also cut out the collar piece here. I ironed on inner facing um, this morning. Yesterday I did like the whole like most of the blouse. Today I did the color I ironed facing on. It doesn't tell me how many pieces to cut of what pieces, but I just kind of assumed that there were two pieces in the collar, um, one for the inside and then the outside. Um, so I have two layers for this. And I ironed my seams also, so my seams are all ironed open inside of the blouse so far. And I also ironed the color pieces especially because I needed to iron the interfacing on. I unfolded the pieces to the skirt and began to assemble them. So, I just realized that it's St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> I am wearing green, though. Uh, so, I wear the sweater a lot, though. So, like, it's not that much of a surprise and I'm working on a green dress but like at least I'm festive all right so yesterday I did pin the skirt and the bodice together I just didn't sew it together. So these are gathers for um, the front of the bodice and then there's two gathered sections for the back of the bodice and then here's that other front section because the back 
doesn't have a closure, it's only open in the front where it will button in the front. Okay, it doesn't look great laying down here, but I tried it on and it is really cute. I think I did have decided that I want to do the longer sleeves, um, so I will need to do the sleeves, but I think I'll do sleeves last and I'll work on like the collar and the facing. Alright, this looks like a confusing jumbled mess, but I have the facing where, that, where the buttons will go. Um, this will get turned into the dress. Um, it's pinned in place and then I have the collar pinned in place So I'm gonna sew The collar here. This is the piece of the collar that has the interfacing um, Ironed to it, so I'm gonna sew this to the neckline then um, After I have it sewed in place, I'm gonna do I think the right sides together like this and then flip it in I think that's how I'm going to do the collar. I'm not the greatest at figuring out how to put in collars, and they aren't very detailed in the instructions, but I think that's just what I'm going to do. And then in the images, it looks like the collar here is done first, and then the facings get flipped in, and I think they help cover some of the messiness. That's what I'm thinking, at least. This looks so confusing right now. <laughs> ah! I just stabbed myself. Okay, so <laughs> this is the dress so far. All right, so I sewed this side of the collar to the dress so that the outside's nice and clean. Um, then I sewed on the second piece of the collar and I just tucked it in and also hid that neck seam in there. So everything is tucked in. I'm probably just gonna do this sewing by hand. Um, I don't wanna run it under my sewing machine because there's kind of like, there's, I don't want to like stitch something accidentally. It's a little bunchy. Um, so, I think I'm just going to sew this by hand carefully on the inside, and then I can work on sewing the facings and then tucking those in as well. The edge of the collar was tucked in and sewn down by hand. The facing was sewn by machine to help speed up the process. I snipped away corners and cut, cut notches away. They were needed for the facings to be turned right sides out. The facing is now finished being sewn in. I sewed this in by hand all the way down. And my cat Ronnie was laying on this so it's very crumpled up and I need to iron it. Okay, so I so I made a mistake when um, making this. Um, this facings for the set, different sides are supposed to be a little different. Like this one is correct for underneath where the buttons are sewn on. But the other side that overlaps over the dress um it's supposed to uh not have this corner and it's supposed to like be smooth uh let me show you so uh this is the pattern this side is supposed to just be like smooth so i only used the one facing piece rather than um there was another one <laughs> and i just wasn't thinking very well i guess <laughs> so I have to undo um, the facing up there, smooth out that corner, and then I think it'll just be fine. <laughs> so today, I'm going to unpick the facing that I hand sewed here, and I'm going to have to flip it and then smooth it out. Um, yeah, <laughs> so it's going to need to... Uh, round out and take out like that corner so that it'll look like it's supposed to like all it's supposed to like be like I guess like just gradually ease that corner out and smooth it out so it'll look right <laughs> I picked that facing section open to fix the issue
and then I sew the facing back closed. I measured and marked where the buttons would go to be 4 inches apart per the rationing guidelines. Alright, so I sewed the buttons and buttonholes on the dress, and I pinned the hem, but I haven't tried on to see if that's a good length yet. I'll do that later. I think I'm going to cut out the sleeves right now because I never cut those out, and then get the sleeves attached, work on those, then I'll just have to hem the bottom, and then the dress should be done. So I need to find the piece for the sleeves. Alright, I found the sleeve pattern have pattern weights on there and then there's the belt so I'm gonna make both and I'm gonna try to see if I can make the inner facing I have work for the belt so that it'll be uh, nice and stiff and good for a belt so now it's time to cut this out Okay, I didn't film it, but I just made the belt. And what I'm struggling with right now is I do have belt buckles, but in the list of materials, it says we can't use any metal. And we can't use uh, like metal buckles, but the only way I can think of closing the belt without a buckle is to just use a button and buttonhole. Hmm. I would rather use a buckle. <laughs> I guess I'll have to use a button though. Mm. These are my sleeves. When I tried them on, they seemed a tad tight on my biceps, so my solution was to add an underarm gusset, which worked really well. I sewed the sleeve cuff by hand. And I also decided to sew the sleeve into the shoulder by hand as well. Once the sleeves were done, all I had to do was finish the hem. 